So in .NET 7, there is a new feature called output caching. So there were, and there is this thing called output caching. Beautiful, it's part of base pin. What? What did they fix? I don't see. Um, and how it works? It's a, middle, it's a middleware, so it works everywhere. And you just do use output cache. For the middleware, you do add output cache, and in the add output cache, there are options to say what to cache and how to cache it. So it's all code based. And then you can say, okay, this endpoint is cached, for instance. And vary by query, vary by value. So all the options you want for output caching. Um, also attributes. And so what I did is. Oh, but this is under .NET 7 and it's available already right now in preview, but it's not under .NET 6 and we target .NET 6. So what I did is on get, I published a custom package that copies the code from ASP.NET Core repository, but targets 6.0, because there is nothing in this feature that is specific, that uses specific things from, or that require at least um, 7.0. Uh, so I made a 6.0 target package, some samples, the same one as the source code, but now you can use it in any .NET 6 application, including Portrait. So I made a thing here, Portrait Core. I will run it. I go to the admin. Um, features output altered output caching provided with net output caching okay it's enabled it's enabled which means if i go on the site here and i look at that i do a five here and i see it doesn't work and i know why it's beautiful so uh it doesn't work and i know why Logo. F5 and now it works. You see age 52, meaning this is a response from cache because it added the age later, 52 seconds. So it was cached. The cached value is from 52 seconds ago. If I hit F5, it's not cached anymore. F5, now it's cached. And you see it's around one minute because the default cache in this case was one minute. So the after one minute it got a fresh entry, and now I'm getting a new entry. And if I get five again, it's cached. Okay. So this one here should not be cached. It isn't, but if I get five again, now it's cached. And it's also faster. So here's six five milliseconds. And if I go on a page that is not cached, 12 milliseconds. Well, this one doesn't work. I got this one, 10 milliseconds. Okay, but now if I hit again, seven milliseconds, five, seven, four, ten. Don't miss. But the benchmarks show that it's much, much, much faster because it's cached. Um, so the code is very simple. It's just the code code. I won't publish it. I will ask someone to work on that. So the code here is just a very simple module that does what? That in the configure services does add output cache and in the configure says use output cache, the simplest things you can. But there are lots of options to configure and policies and rules. So here what I'm seeing, so by default, when you use the output cache, it doesn't cache anything. It has the middleware, but it says, no, I'm not caching anything until you tell me to cache something like a route, an action, path, whatever. And so what I wanted with this module is by default, it should cache everything like the one we have in option one. When you enable it, everything is cached. 
but the admin or authenticated uh, well, but the request, the authenticated request or the post request and yours. And this is what the default policy in the cache does. So by calling it this way, add base policy and pulling something that does nothing, it will just enable a default policy to, on everything that will just cache everything. Okay. Only if it's a get, only if it's unauthenticated. That's why while I was on the admin, it didn't work. And when I went back on the front end, it didn't work either because I was still authenticated. Uh, but there are options like defining the expiration. Um, you could also define different expiration by route, like slash block might want to be a different or might not want to be cached and other pages you might want to cache. You might want to cache authenticated requests. You might want to cache authenticated requests on the front end and not the admin. So there are lots of things that we might want to, to allow. We can also evict um, things. We can also group things to be evicted, like blog might be evicted uh, by itself. Um, so yeah, so that's the thing I wanted to demo, it's working, targeting 106, and this thing is just referencing the package. Okay. Once we ship targeting net 7, which, which we should also try eventually, we will be able to remove this reference. Uh, so this is just experimental, but it works. If we have fixes, fixes in the net 7, we can put them on this package also. So that should work. Um, I'm not publishing it because because I think this module should expose the options that we can change in the, the options here. And there are many things. And actually we have even more like um, default expiration. So by default it's one minute. I think it's written as text here. It doesn't show up. Um, Maximum body size to store the size of the cache pertinent. So, for instance, 100 megabyte. Above that, it won't cache anything else. Um, we might want also to be able in the admin to define sections. Like we, I, I think we should be able to say blog, something like that, uh, and um, the expiration like no cash or expires for five minutes and then say everything else will expire for, I don't know, 10 minutes, you see? So we, should, we have some things like that in Orchard where we can define routes or custom pages to, in Orchard 1, I mean, to set different settings. And I think we need that uh, here also. And this can be done with options so you can, do something like we and here you have a predicate so you can say http context let's request that path that starts with elements okay so here you say life blog so the idea is that this module on startup will read the options. It could be also in the files, maybe it's better on the admin. And we'll just add a policy based on the options dynamically. And in this case, starts with and then say dot expire and pass a, a time. Or you could even say no cache to just say don't cache this thing. Um, and maybe also all these options vary by header, vary by query, vary by value. The idea being like um, by default, it will vary by all the arguments in a query string. But when there is a so when there is a page it will work, but you might want to say that you don't want to vary by anything else than a specific property or a specific set of property. Uh, so that's the way to do that. Uh, it supports locking, which we, I'm not sure we had that in Orchard 1, uh, but a super powerful is it's in a very long form. There's um, tagging. Oh, tagging is very important because then you can define sections. Like if you say tag, 
workflow. What it means is every page that we start with slash go, even blog post, will have the same blog tag. And then when you want to evict everything, you can then evict everything that is tagged with blog. And this way you can just refresh all your blocking system, blogging system. Something else we can do then is intercept a request when a content item is served and then tag the current response with the content item ID that was displayed in this page. And then when this content item ID is changed, we can evict from the cache all the pages that render this content item ID. We have that in option one also. So to do that, we just look at the shapes and uh, we already do that for dynamic caching for the shapes, but now we can do that for the output caching also. Uh, so that's why tag will be interesting. That might be an option to set in the admin and then support that in the, in the policy. And to do that, I assume that someone will do what is called um, the custom policy. So the ad based policy, you can implement a class. Well, you can implement the interface like uh, my policy. I output slash policy. And by doing that, this is much better to implement these things. These are called by the middleware. And we will add an instance of my policy there. Okay, so we'll say just new my policy, okay, something like that. And this way, all the logic, all the configuration will be in these things here. Like, do we cache authenticated response or not? Do we cache 200 or errors? Do we cache get or post? Do we cache this URL or not? Um, so everything can be done there, okay? There is an example in the source code. And I, I think that's how it should be done. So here we can say new and then pass the options from Orchard and this guy will tell on each request if it should cache the response or if it should serve a response from the cache based on all the options we set in the end. Uh, but I won't do that because I don't have time. So I encourage someone to find an issue, track the work and um, implement that. This thing here will be shipped already. This thing here will be shipped already and work as an output cache module to make your uh, website much faster. Also, another requ uh, request I have is that there is a single um, store for now which is memory so it will store the output cache in memory which is fine in most cases and that's also what we have in orchard one uh, i like people to implement uh, different stores same thing there is an interface like a disk store okay so implement that and you can see that we need to be able to remove entries by a tag name, get an entry by a key, and set an entry by a key. That's all. Okay. Um, I don't think this is the best interface to do that. I wanted to do more, but the time made it much simpler than what I wanted. I wanted to pass a custom uh, class here so that per implementation we have more options to do. So right now it's just requires to be able to store a byte array. So this is a system that will give us a byte array containing all the information for the cache entry and return it. Uh, but yeah, ideally, so maybe not disk, but because we use it a lot, ready store, for instance, could be an elastic search store, but ready store would make sense because that's what we use for all the cloud-based stuff. Um, could be a blob storage, but that's bad for perf. Um, if it's Redis, then it will work also on Azure Redis. So Redis store would be the best thing to do, and it should be super simple to implement. Just get items tag, store byte array, and read byte array. So that's the, the only thing to do.
And so I would love to see that as a, another feature of the of the module, uh, or maybe a different another feature of the module, but depending on where these abstractions maybe or a different package. So that would be super useful. And um, this thing should be a package that is available on uh, you get. We might do that in .NET itself, but I don't think we'll have time to do it for .NET 7. So the package will be super useful for everyone, but just not true. Uh, 